Hi, Terry Shanefelt for UAB School of Medicine. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to calculate a number needed to treat. To do that, I'm going to use data from the RAL study, which is a randomized controlled trial in advanced congestive heart fa failure patients. And the patients are randomized to spironolactone or placebo. The outcome I'm interested in is total mortality, and less patients in the spironolactone group died than in the placebo group. So I'd like to express this beneficial relationship of spironolactone and mortality in a clinically useful way. One of the ways I can do that is to calculate something called the number needed to treat or NNT. Now a number needed to treat is the number of patients I need to give my new therapy to for the duration of the study to prevent one additional bad outcome. Now it's important to know how to make this calculation because often authors of randomized controlled trial reports do not give the number needed to treat. And I think it's useful to help you better understand uh, the results of a study. So the formula for a number needed to treat is one or the inverse of the absolute risk reduction. So the first thing we're going to have to do is calculate our absolute risk reduction. So an absolute risk reduction is the absolute difference in event rates between the two arms of the study. And I'm going to label the event rate in the placebo group or the control group as the CER. And I'm going to label the event rate in the experimental arm or the spironolactone arm as EER or experimental event rate. And so the formula for an absolute risk reduction is just the absolute difference between the control event rate and the experimental event rate. So how do we make these calculations? Well, the control event rate is just a percentage of patients in the control arm, in this case the placebo arm, that had the outcome of interest. So 386 patients who were assigned to placebo died out of a total of 841 patients. And when you make that calculation, it comes out to 46%. So my control event rate is 46%. My experimental event rate is the percentage of patients in the spironolactone arm that died. So there were 284 patients that died out of a total of 822 patients. And this comes out to 35%. So my experimental event rate is 35%. So now all I have to do is plug in my numbers. So my control event rate is 46% minus my experimental event rate, which is 35%, and this comes out to 11%. So my absolute risk reduction is 11%, and now I can plug it into my formula for NNT. So 1 over the absolute risk reduction, I'm going to change that 11% to a decimal, 0.11, comes out to 9 people. So I have to give 9 people spironolactone for the duration of the RAL study, which was two years, to prevent one additional death. Now one thing I will say here is what if my experimental therapy, in this case spironolactone, caused a bad event? And one of the things it did cause in this study was gynecomastia more than the placebo group. So if my experimental therapy increases a bad outcome, instead of calculating an NNT, I would calculate a number needed to harm. Um, it's mechanically done the exact same way except I relabel the absolute risk reduction to the absolute risk increase. But I still do things the exact same way. I calculate the rate of the bad event in the sp spironolactone group and that becomes my experimental event rate. I calculate the outcome of the bad event in my placebo arm and I plug it into this formula and it will tell me the number needed to harm.